Today's show is at the Monarch Sculpture Park. This is the entrance here. We have an appointment. It's a beautiful place. Like always, it's raining. It's the visit with the person of high strangeness. Uh, today we are at Monarch uh, Sculpture Park and uh, we're going to meet the lady that owns the place and we're going to talk about some of the artwork and uh, for those of you that don't live here there's a website we'll show you later and then um, it's a wonderful place we've been here before um, it, not perfume because we um, anyway I have been here before let's just go that way and so what happens it rains so we're going to show you a lot of the indoor activities that are here and so come right along and um, Enjoy your trip to Monarch Sculpture Park. Hello, Myrna. How are you? Doing great. Thank you. Do you remember how we met? I do indeed. I sat down beside you at uh, Costco when we were eating lunch. Uh huh. But he, here's the rest of the story. I was at home just not doing anything and I wanted a hot dog really bad. <laughs> I don't like hot dogs. <laughs> And I went to Costco's and there was an older gentleman sitting there and I asked could I sit there and he said okay and I said how are you and he said fine and he got up and left and he made room for you see yes he did uh, yeah we were meant to meet yeah was it yeah and then we found out that I had been here before and I couldn't couldn't tape and so mm -hmm. universe arranged it I emailed your website to a lot of people Mm -hmm. And uh, they thought you was a wonderful person. They looked at some, uh, you know, your pictures. So, so tell me, how did you get from, from here to here? Do you know? Well, I started as a teacher. I have a master's degree in literature. Uh huh. And a friend and I attended a dealer's open, and he made the mistake of saying how easy it was to become an art dealer. Ah. And we looked at each other and went. This is what we'd like to do. Uh -huh. So we opened contemporary prints in Lakewood, Washington mm -hmm. and had it for about three years. And my business partner decided to go back to school, so we dissolved the business. Mm -hmm. But then I went to art school mm -hmm. just to get first-hand training, intending to open another art gallery. Mm -hmm. But I started taking the classes and I found I loved what I was doing and the creative process just melded with me and when I found carving I started carving wood first mm -hmm. and then I discovered stone mm -hmm. and I knew I had found my life's passion. You're calling, yeah. Yes, and so that was um, in the early 80s and I, I was very fortunate. I was participating in exhibitions and I had my first solo exhibition in uh, 1984. And then um, a visiting artist from the Ukraine came in for the Goodwill Games in Seattle and I met him, Vasily Federuk, and I didn't know at the time, but he was in the planning stages of organizing a stone symposium in the Ukraine. And two years after I met him, I received an invitation to be a participant. So I went to the Ukraine and I created a Firebird based on a Ukrainian myth. Mm -hmm. It's in red granite. It carries an environmental message on its wings. Mm -hmm. And I took first place at that symposium. And I was asked by um, the head of the artist union of the Ukraine to come back um, the following year with a body of work to tour th the Ukraine. And on top of that invitation came one um, from Lithuania because a Lithuanian artist had mm -hmm. participated and seen my work. Mm -hmm. and well, we're going to be able to uh, see a picture of that so we know what we... Oh, yes. Oh, oh, okay, so 
how about we leave it there um, as far as that goes, mm -hmm. and then we could get back to that when when the friends can actually see what we're talking about. Oh, that's fine. But that's that's the, how my art evolution. career began. Oh, okay. So here, let me be quiet. We'll do it your way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I also attended that year um, the first symposium of Central Europus Parcus in Vilnius, Lithuania. And two years later, I went back to create a symbolic gate for that park. And since that time, I, I had a, an idea about opening my own sculpture park. So I was looking in Europe at the different facilities, what I liked best about each one, and what I, I liked was they had living quarters for the artists, working space for them, and outdoor installation room once the pieces were created. Most galleries and museums only have indoor space. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, why couldn't I do that here in my home state of Washington? And so um, a woman who was taking classes from me overheard my conversation about this idea and came to me and said, why aren't you doing it? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I don't feel I can do it on my own. And she said, fine, I'll match you dollar for dollar let's find the property. And so we began the search. And we looked in King County and Pierce, and finally uh, she saw a notice in the paper about the property here in, in outside of Tonino. And we came and looked at it and said, yes, this is where we're going to start the park. And that's how Monarch began. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Monarch uh, named after the butterfly, I take it? Yes. We do have quite a few butterflies here. Yes, we do. And um, unfortunately, my <laughs> business partner passed away last year. We had a memorial for her where we released monarch butterflies. Oh, my. So. And so you've been here, what, 15 years? Uh, actually, since 1994. Oh, that's longer than that. Mm -hmm. But we've been open to the public mm -hmm. since 1998. It took mm -hmm. us that long to get the property ready and to establish a 501c3. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that later. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, and eventually we'll show you website and everything. So the other thing is, uh, I don't think I introduced you properly. So if anybody's looking for your art, they would look for your signature as? Myrna Orsini. Orsini. O-R-S-I-N-I. This is just, it, the energy here is so good. So when you bought the place, did you go by energy or looks? Or? A, a bit of both. Mm -hmm. We just felt that this was right. And the, what we did, we purchased 70 acres, which is across the road, mm -hmm. initially to be the park. Mm -hmm. a beautiful view of Mount Rainier, a small lake at the back of the property, rolling hills. It's absolutely gorgeous. Is, is it Offord Lake? No, it's right it's here. It's another one. It's right here across mm -hmm. from this. And two years later, this property came up for sale. And I personally purchased it mm -hmm. and moved my home and studio out here. And then we started clearing the grounds and mm -hmm. preparing for the symposium that we held here, a stone mm -hmm. symposium, in 1998, where we um, invited 13 carvers from nine countries. And they were here for six weeks. We provided the stone. They created their pieces. That started the park permanent collection. Mm -hmm. And then we were, op were able to open to the public. I understand you just, uh, you just went to Texas to the LBJ ranch. Is that what you told Yes, me? I did. I installed my new piece, which is, um, I never quite remember. It's Cosmic Mother. And... It's Yule marble, and the piece, the marble is three feet high, and the pedestal that has a kinetic element to it is an additional six feet. And it was carved at Marble Marble, the symposium in Marble, Colorado, and then taken down to um, Benini Sculpture Ranch, which is the old Lyndon Baines Johnson ranch mm -hmm. that he... Um, coveted as a boy, and after he became president, the first act he did for himself was to buy that property. No. So. Yeah. So I'm gonna have you.
give us a little tour here and then we'll get back to some of your personal stories, okay? Wonderful. What's an apple tree? The works that you're about to see are in our indoor gallery, which we call the Papillon Gallery, are from current and past artists in residence. The first wall that uh, you'll be seeing and the wood pieces in front of it are by Thomas Yogi, originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. He does also uh, these stretched fabric pieces over wood. This piece has over 40 integral parts to it. We'll take a still. When you say uh, residents, do they stay here? Yes, the artists stay here. Initially, for the first few years, we were paying the artists to come here, uh -huh. providing the material that, for, that they worked with, and uh, they could stay here for up to four months. Because of the economy and our mm -hmm. limited funds, the artists now pay us to be here. Mm -hmm. And they can stay as long as they they wish, and they create new bodies of work. Mm -hmm. And we represent it in our gallery, or on our grounds, and they always leave us, when they do depart, one piece mm -hmm. for our permanent collection. Oh, how wonderful. Mm -hmm. Belle Wellman, um, professor of art for 30 years at the University of Washington, corrected, um, excuse me, created this bronze piece entitled Woman with Hoops. The painting on the wall of the seated figures is also a woman piece. And one of his figurative uh, drawings in Conte Chocolate Excuse and me. Charcoal is also represented here. Oh, I like this one. This is the Conte chalk piece. We have others uh, all around the room of his figurative studies, and you'll be seeing those a little later. Um, this high luster bronze piece is, is by Orsini, myself, and it's titled Chi, the center of our being. Psst, nothing behind me, is there? Mm -mm. Okay, leave it to me. I come in here and run into things. This is beautiful. Hmm. Okay. Okay. The pink alabaster piece that you're seeing is titled La Concolage. It also is done by myself, Orsini. Um, and the figurative piece in limestone called Summertime is another work of mine. Tell me, um, how do you name your pieces? I have the idea for the piece, and as I'm working it, the title comes. It comes, it'll tell you. It tells me. Just as the stone often tells me what's inside, what to carve. I hate working with blocks, cut out blocks mm -hmm. of stone, because it, it's as if it hampers my vision of what's inside. I would much prefer to use stone that um, doesn't have those finished edges. In fact, 99% of my work with stone is, is stone that doesn't have. It, it's my preference. It's the flow. It, 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 a square doesn't flow. Exactly. It yeah. contains you. Yeah. And I don't like that. Yeah. Um, if you turn... Okay, we're going to turn. This is real TV. Just beautiful in here. And if we had smell of it, you could smell the wood and the paint and the... This marble relief that you're seeing now is done by Georgiana Meloff. She's an artist from uh, British Columbia. 
but she is also American born. The, the more you, time you spend with this piece, the more you see uh, carved there. Going to back all the way up and take a, a, well, we have to do it in two sections. So we go here and a little lower. Cool. This piece is, this is the bottom piece, yeah. Beautiful dreamer. Beautiful. And Georgiana Mella is also a master wood carver. And we have three of her large wood pieces done in Madro Madrona, uh, the, the root of... I'm aiming at the, at the one in the back at the moment. Yes, that piece is titled... Um, A woman with the angel on her shoulders. Uh huh. Okay. Most of her work oh, deals like with sea imagery, mm -hmm. and this is a case in point. Uh, she tried to capture the froth of a wave. Here you can find a pelican. Here's a sea turtle. There's a water snake. There's um, a seal, and of course, always and forever, there's a human form mm -hmm. represented. Oh, it just smells so good. And her other piece, which is one of my favorites, is the Three Graces. This is truly a museum piece. Take a step and step back a little bit. Yeah. It's such dark wood. I hope the photography, you know, can bring up some of its detail. Uh, well, we, uh, how about I do it? I do some of it in sections here. That should work. Just, wow. Pretty. So, would you happen to know how long it takes? On an average, to um, to create a piece like that, it can take a year or longer. Yeah, longer. Um, because often you're not working just on one piece. Oh, really? You're working on several others. I could never do that. I can't either, but Georgiana does. Really? Yeah. When I do some, I have to finish. I'm committed it. to what I'm working on mm -hmm. right now, but uh, she's able to do that. Wow, multifaceted person. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I spotted a, a bird, a uh, per, parakeet. What's a parakeet? A cockadoo. Uh, the tropical birds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's done by Mike Holland from Montana. Mm -hmm. He also did the seagulls in flight over here. Mm -hmm. That would be here. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, I of the Needle, which is bronze plate, is another piece of mine. And this is fabricated bronze. Mm hmm. And it isn't cast. Gee. As you walk around the piece, it actually opens in a narrow passage so that you can view through it, and that's why it's titled Eye of the Needle. Now do it. Oh, I see. Done here, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look through there. There it is. Wonderful. Let me give you a close up of the grain here. It's just it's not grain, I don't know what you call it, metal. It's a patina on the metal. It's created by chemical. Oh it is? Yes. It's just fascinating. There are actually three patinas on that so that it gives it more depth. 
Oh, here, and this is the back. Yes. The back of the... Three graces. The three graces. And you have... You, no matter which way you look at it, you have a... Wow. Sculpture is to be three-dimensional. Three-dimensional, look at there. Mm -hmm. It's such a wonderful award. These are Wellman, Valentin Wellman, figurative studies, again in chalk, our charcoal and Conte. Also, um, the two bronze figures that you'll see in, in a few moments are works by Wellman. It is it is glare, but we can't help that. Mm -hmm. so. Now on this wall, over here, mm -hmm. these are early works of Wellman, 1950s figurative studies. Um, egg tempera and um, lithograph at the bottom. The blue mm -hmm. figure is the lithograph. The next study is um, charcoal and then an in wash figure. And I like the lamp. Oh, the yeah. lamp is done by an artist in Oregon. And it's a crystal mm -hmm. that's been woven together. Do we have a map to play? Yeah, there is a map. Let's go show the map how to get here while we're here. Sure, we have a sign map. Mm -hmm. right there. It's then here are pictures of the uh, 2089 competition. It's called me. This piece was the title piece of the exhibition that toured through the Ukraine and into Lithuania to Vilnius. And I'm sorry, but I've forgotten the title. Feminine Mystique, how could I ever There you go. <laughs> Feminine Mystique. And it was in response to questions that women in the Ukraine were asking me mm -hmm. the preceding year. They wanted to know how the feminine revolution in America affected mm -hmm. my life. For this is one of yours too, no? Yes, this is one of mine too. This is Menelaus. You can see he, he was the husband of Helen of Troy. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to know how that feminine revolution affected my life, personally and professionally. And I couldn't really express it in words, so I tried to do it visually through the images that I created and took to the Ukraine. And there were 22 of them that went. The one that you're seeing now is, did not go to the Ukraine. This is new. It's titled Barcelona. And it's images that captured my imagination when I was touring that city. You know, um, sometimes I think about how women have a bond. A, uh, university, uh, you know, everywhere. And then I wonder why we can't get it together and stop our husbands and sons from making a war. Do you ever think about that? Well, we're still primarily a uh, patriarchal society. I mean, globally. Uh, very few women really run the, the governments or the major businesses. And the power lies there, unless we as women take it over. That was what I meant, yeah. Yes. Why can't we just say that's enough? Let's do it this way. Well, We're gonna because have to we, we, it. <laughs> we have advantage to do that. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Now, I don't know if uh, these two figures will show. 
Hang on a minute. Wow. This is um, Femme Moderne. This was one of the pieces that went to the Ukraine in response to the women's questions. And this is the modern woman taking hold of her life and moving forward. That's sort of what I just asked you, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> just about what you asked me. So well, why can't we just go forward and, we can. and change things a little bit? I'm trying to go to the back here. A little shaky, but you know me, we shake together here. God, I like this. Wow. And it takes you about a year per piece, also? No, no. If, if I, well. The piece that I just created for Benini Sculpture Ranch took me one week. Oh, wow. And, and I was told when I initially went there by one of the men who set the piece on the bench that I couldn't possibly create that piece in a week. And my response was, I'm on schedule. I have to. I've never missed a deadline yet in my life. I haven't either. You suppose you, some of you, well, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I think some of your work could be guided or channeled, or, mm -hmm. or you have help, don't you? I think we do. I think mm -hmm. we, as individuals, but particularly as artists, have a creative or spiritual guide. We have a guide, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we respond to that, and we respond to the materials of our choice. And a mine, of course, is stone. Mm -hmm. But um, it's such a powerful, enriching feeling to create. I can't imagine what it must be like to be God or the universal creator. Because I'm only a tiny part of that, but I'm so grateful for it, because uh, my life is so rich and full. Not monetarily, necessarily. None. All, all humble, all humble um, creative people are not rich monetarily. No. But we but are we, rich by people and creation. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons for the park. Uh, it was my gift to the community. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do believe that um, when we, we put ourselves out there and we give, more comes back to us. But that's not the primary reason for doing it. It's that I, I think we have to be and are connected to one another. And we need to share our joy. And I do that through the park and through the things that I create. Wow. Wow. We are now outside of the building. When they, if you hear me yelp, it's my back again. Oh, I'm going to try to walk for you a little bit. And, and you said the, uh, this was by who? This partial door surround is done uh -huh. by Peter King. He uh, lives in Pensacola, Florida and is a very famous uh, architectural ceramicist. And he came to Monarch and gave two workshops here. Mm -hmm. The white marble piece that you're about to see is one of my creations. It's called um, Transfiguration. Somebody went to your website, and uh, one of the things they wanted to ask me, like I was telling you, is how you name your pieces. They were just so excited about this work. Isn't that wonderful? It, it quit raining a little bit. The sun is still there. But just to show you, Washingtonians, we don't care. We are in charge of our environment. No, wrong word. 
<laughs> of our world and what we want to do with it, no? Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Kip's coat is in New Zealand. Uh, limestone? Limestone? Mm -hmm. Limestone. It's windy out here. I hope you can hear us. And the trident, uh, the triangular piece, is a kinetic piece by myself. And uh, it's based on the Patsy Cline uh, song. Um, my life is a triangle. Oh. And it's, it's really fun because I chose so that when the clangers hit the, some are true tones and others it's very cacophonous. <gasps> Isn't that just like a relationship? Yeah, <laughs> you tell them, hey. <laughs> and oh. the, the dragon figures, the dancing dragon figures in pink and yellow there. I'm so blind, I thought it was a, a polka, uh, a coca pelly. <laughs> ah, that's done by Benbo Bullock from uh -huh. um, Vallejo, California. I'm gonna go get my car keys. All right, we're gonna drive around a little bit. It's a beautiful sitting area. That's really nice. Look at the colors on these beautiful flowers. Wow. Let's try that again. That's what I was trying to do. There she goes. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. Yeah. Okay. Eternity. Okay. Unfortunately, Vasily passed in wood and stone. This piece is titled Kern Street Circus. It's done by Leanne Powers. She was our, our first emerging artist that Monarch Park supported. And the bicycle is the original bicycle that she and her two friends rode around their neighborhood on and the neighborhood street was called Kern Street Circus. Wow. Okay. Now, now the piece that we're coming up to is one of the homage or tribute pieces that I do each year uh, for the park and this is a tribute to uh, Louise Nevelson. Mm -hmm. And she used wood scraps and created wood collages and painted them either a flat matte black or white. Mm -hmm. And so this is in tribute to her. We have an outhouse, so don't panic. You're all taken care of. It's always important when you go somewhere, you know? That's right. Yeah. I got that already. Okay, did you get the portal? No, it's a portal. Yeah. The, oh, yeah, I see it. The green piece, the piece and, and that's portal. one of my works. It's mm -hmm. titled The Portal, and it's the main entrance to the park. To the park itself. Okay. And the stainless steel and black piece there is done by Dennis Peacock. And the white marble piece to the back was done by Ivan Bulovitsky from the Ukraine.
Mm -hmm. And the silver piece here called Waiting in Silence was done by Vladis Konchowskis from Lithuania. Mm -hmm. And the lifeboat uh, is done by a Yelm artist, uh, Gary Hammer. Now we're on our way to the lower gardens. Is there an entrance fee here? No, it's by donation only. By donation only. We never turn anyone away. Oh, yeah. This is the butterfly tree. That's it, one that I, I had stood in front of. This is my yeah. work. Wow. And this was the first piece in the park. Um, no, I believe that you took the pictures along the highway. I did, yeah, in 2006 I did. Okay, well the big bell is by Kevin Krieger, a local artist. This piece, um, I missed it. Skookum Chuck, is what he calls it. Oh, wow. And then the trident piece is done by I'm not sure Dennis that one was here. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Most of these weren't. We just put these up a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And then of course Velocipede. I had yeah, I have the a picture. unicycle I have a picture is my of that. work. Yeah. Yeah, I have a picture of that. We and we started out. We started out here, yeah. You can walk, you can bring bicycles in here, can you? Yes. The Olympia ra mm -hmm. Rails to Trails mm -hmm. runs right, through there. right uh, parallel to my property. Oh, wow. We get a lot of visitors who come on bike, later come back with family and friends. Mm -hmm. The reaction to the park by most people is, wow, oh, we yeah. never expected this person can do a wedding there, huh? Yes, we do have weddings in the park. Uh -huh. And it's by donation, uh -huh. so you uh, give us what you can afford. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Beautiful. I have a granddaughter that's getting married. I'll open the gate. Wilson from Central, okay. And he's the featured sculptor for Tycho Metal. And this area is our butterfly maze. It, it's a hedge maze and eventually it'll be full grown and uh, we'll have sculptures inside it and you work to find the gold piece which is Caitlin the butterfly girl. And this piece is uh, pickup sticks, and it is my work. Jesse Swigert did Animus, this steel piece. The, the tall steel piece is by Dennis Peacock, and it's titled Prometheus Still Bringing Fire. The green one, you say? No, the, the tall uh, brown. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. We're looking at the wrong Here we go. This is it. The, the green piece uh, was done by Bill Wilson, the featured artist. This one here, yeah, all right. That's the one, yeah. Um, I can come back to this one. No. We do an artist in residency program here, and this was an artist from California who uh, did this piece to represent an ancient structure. Like Her name was uh, Pat Warnick. Mm -hmm. You hear animals, you hear dogs. I would assume you have everything else in the middle of the 
Excuse me, in the middle of the night. Oh yes, those beautiful coyotes. coyotes. And, and what you're seeing now is the sound garden. Mm -hmm. These are musical instruments that one can play. Mm -hmm. And I created it for the children, but mm -hmm. the adults love it. Mm -hmm. And we have musicians that come here and they incorporate the sounds with uh, their music. Yes, I was, I, I was waiting to come in. There was a, those people there, they were talking about Area 51. They must have seen the tag on my car. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, oh, gee, this is beautiful. I think I'm, I'm gonna get out. Hang on a minute. What a view, would you say? Wow. This is a different angle of the musical area here. When you hear me moaning, you'll probably realize it's really time for me to <laughs> quit doing this. The Rainbow mm -hmm. is done Rainbow. by Dr. Sheila Adams. Mm -hmm. And she's now living in the state of Washington. Current, she was from California. The mural that uh, we're it's a mosaic. approaching is a mosaic. And it's by Cheryl Rhodes, the same artist from Kent who did Kaleidoscope Park, the uh -huh. painted mural. I love mosaics. Okay. okay. We'll cross the bridge and go into the main section of the park. Got so excited I quit talking. What do you know? Look <laughs> <laughs> oh, there. Yeah. This is the homage piece to one uh, Moreau. And uh, I think you just caught our pavilion where we. Uh, yeah, if you stop just a minute here, I want to get a. Okay. Oh, gee. This is. I'm sorry. Are you wiggling? It's okay. Th this is uh, the main residence and office mm -hmm. for the park. Turn around. That flat piece with the blue paint on it was done at our open house by children. We always have projects where they can interact and paint or, or work with clay. And they always say, we, have, we don't have anything to do. <laughs> But uh, people think three-dimensional, three you know, all the time. Ah. Well, most of the time. I don't know if you were able to capture the three graces. Well, I got, here. I got two of them. Here's and then here's the third grace. Here's the third. Yeah. There she is. There she is. Got it. And that's my work. And that's uh -huh. uh, concrete on a steel frame. Uh-huh. I wanted you to see. A lower torso. Oh, yeah. Is this yours? No, this no? is Leanne Ooh. Powers, the one who did the bicycle, Kern Street Circus. Uh -huh. Got it. Uh -huh. Oh, beautiful. Great. I'm going to have to back up again. This is as far as this allows me to go. I'm, I'm so glad she knows every angle of this place because imagine me backing up over here. <laughs> Gary Hammer. The white piece there is Bill Wilson's. And this piece called Mount Adams is by from Portland. You have a pond. The pond and the mm -hmm. um, ancient pier is. Um, by an artist from Scotland who was mm -hmm. here during our symposium. Mm -hmm. 
the newest piece in the park happens to be the globe mm -hmm. and it's called the hands of god it's by jeff jolly and if you tap the fingers on one side it vibrates around and the fingers on the other side move and create sound also and the vibrations continue around for a brief time okay but When you tap the fingers on one side, it vibrates around the globe, and the other fingers on the other hand um, vibrate. And this piece is titled, The Hands of God. Tap on the fingers, it says, mm -hmm. and observe. This is just awesome. Again, this is by Jeff Jolly, mm -hmm. who's a Washington State artist. Yeah, I just asked you uh, about, uh, you said you flooded? Yes, when you... um, our creek flooded mm. and uh, a lot of rushing water. It moved a few things, but didn't create much damage, mm -hmm. fortunately. This tall piece is by Valentine Wellman with the seagull on the top. What are you capturing? Everything. <laughs> okay. The, um, the trees and everything. The, the, the flags along here represent the nations of the artists who have participated here. Mm -hmm. It's called International Alley for that reason. Mm -hmm. And then the croquet set that's there, um, because that's a very swampy area, not much could be placed there. So I created that to occupy this space. Mm -hmm. And on either side, over here we have the cedars and we have a nature walk in there and there's a small creek that runs through and then on this side where the cottonwoods are we, we put in an area of the nature walk called fantasy garden and it has things to delight children and so uh, they find a troll under the bridge a big uh, spider with long legs a dragonfly um, a garden, um, a uh, flower bed. It's actually a bed with uh, flowers in it. And oh, we have mushrooms, dancing mushrooms that are upside down, and they have fun discovering. We also have what I call the sacred grove and prayer tree, and it has the ribbons that people have left with. Uh, messages mm -hmm. and it has become a very popular area of the park almost as popular as the sound garden yeah, this piece is entitled the or titled the chalice ah. there's just so many little crevices of things and people and places and it, it it's just Pretty. Uh, this is the gong from the from the back. Uh, we filmed it for you from the road there. Birds. The mama bird, the mama bird was making noise, so I followed her voice, and this is what I found. Isn't it beautiful? Mm-hmm. Here comes mama bird. So mad. So, soon, so you know how to get here, it's off the old 99 on Warwick Road and uh, you have a number there and if you get lost you call me 
This is a map of the ground, uh, of the ground. So we went, uh, let's see, we went from the office. Show me which way we went. Okay. We were here at the office. We went around by the studio, back up, saw the works on the other side of the gallery, then went on to Waldrick, around uh, to the back of the property, came around the butterfly maze this way, crossed the creek, and saw the works that are along both sides and near the stage, mm -hmm. the pavilion. And we have over 115 sculptures on the grounds currently, and the exhibit changes out um, as we sell or the artists remove uh, for another venue and bring new works in. Mm -hmm. And the park is open dawn to dusk year-round. It's by donation. The gallery is open by appointment, or if we're on the grounds, ask and we'll open it for you. On, a, on, a, on an average, uh, if a, in a, with a brisk walk, how long do you think it would think to take on everything? It takes at least an hour. We have oh. almost 10 acres here. Yeah. And most people spend two to three hours because they there's so much to see. Yeah. But just a quick tour through, it takes almost an hour. Yeah, driving took 16 minutes. Hmm. Yeah. <coughs> I understand you went to uh, Canon de Chez? Yes, I did. Um, I was at um, Marble Marble in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And on the way down, we visited Arches. And then on the way mm -hmm. uh, back, um, from Texas, we uh, stopped at Bryce and Canyon mm -hmm. de Chez. And what a magical, mystical moment it is um, in the, that canyon. It's as if the past speaks to you. Yeah. And the colors, it's so rich and beautiful. Yes, some of the friends, they come up here mm -hmm. to visit me. So when they do, uh, make sure we come and see you. Wonderful. Yeah, uh, uh, we discovered that you know um, our Travers Terry. Yes, Yeah. I have his flute music. Mm -hmm. And his wife is a jewelry maker. Ah. But she there? I didn't see her. Yeah. I didn't see her jewelry. I probably saw it, but she wasn't present. She was so there. Yeah, she, she's usually there. But anyway, what I want to do is I want to thank you for this wonderful visit. And the timing was just off in 2006 because we would have just made things up as we went along. And today, you gave us a personal tour. Tacoma News Tribune, excuse me, Tacoma News Tribune came and yes. did a story. Yes, and it's going to appear sometime within the next week to two weeks mm -hmm. in the Tribune. Yeah, well, this is going to air much later, so I'm sure they would probably allow you to put it on your website. And you've given me permission to hook your website to mine. Yes, I have. So anytime you want to see, just go to the website. All right, and thank you. And it's been such a wonderful day, and thank you. You made the sunshine. <laughs> ah, together we made the sunshine. We did, yeah. So anyway, i see you next week. How about that? Sunshine. This is Randy, working on the new version of Lillian Miss Lillian.
It is just because you really can. It's part of why I planned it instead. And if we do our part, fill our mission we've had from. Well, you took us here and you took us there. And it is just because you Thank you.